if you are curious about dry needling or if you have questions surrounding dry needling or are wondering what it is, this is the video for you because tonight we're going to go through all that and more. So I'm Dr. Sarah from Resilience Rx and tonight we're going to talk about dry needling. We are going to talk about the process of it, what the procedure actually looks like. And I'm going to show you guys what various things look like. We're going to talk about why it works or how it works. And we're also going to talk about how it integrates into a full plan of care. So process, how it works. So you start with the needle, right? Hence dry needling. So some of the smallest needles are about this size. I will open one for you guys so you can see it. So the needle itself, this is the needle. It comes stuck. This one's stuck with some blue stuff right there on the tube. So I break that and then I can move the needle so the needle doesn't fall out. But this is the needle itself. This is the handle. That's the part that I hold. This is the part that actually goes in someone's body. Very sharp. We don't touch that end for obvious reasons. Um, but that is the small needle. So the size of the needle that you use depends on the muscle that you're needling and the depth at which you want to penetrate the muscle. So that's a 30 millimeter needle. They increase in increments of about 10 millimeters all the way up to 135. So yes, this entire part from my one fingertip to my other fingertip does go inside someone's body. It is not nearly as scary as it sounds or it looks. I've had it done to me. I've done it to people multiple times. This is for needles, this muscles like the glutes, not needles, that's muscles and needles together. So that's for muscles like the glutes, which I treat very commonly. So once we put the needle in, so the process of putting the needle in, there's three different responses that people can have. Some people love the way the needle feels. Other people are kind of indifferent. They're like, man, it's a little uncomfortable, not too bad. And other people don't like it. So it varies how it feels. So I can't say, yes, it feels bad or yes, it feels good. It varies based on each person's response. So once the needle is in, we hook up electrical stimulation to it. Again, sounds much worse than it is, I promise. So there's two different devices that we use. And I'm gonna back up real quick. So with that electrical stimulation, if you're familiar with like a TENS unit, it's gonna be somewhat similar to that, except it's deeper. It's not on the skin. It's actually that muscle is physically contracting. And in the next four weeks, when we do dry needling, you'll be able to see that occur in at least one of those weeks and you'll have a better kind of understanding. Usually once you see it, it makes more sense. So there's two different units. One looks like this. This point touches the needle. The client can hold this part in their hand. I can use my hand and put this on them. It's essentially just the ground. Or you can kind of slip it in for females if we're on like the shoulder blade. I'll just slip it in the bra strap because then it doesn't move and it's stationary. The other TENS unit we can use is this. Now this has three channels and two ends on each channel, positive and a negative. So you can hook up all three at once. This is for more complex patients when you have a lot more needles in and you want to do a lot more e -stim. Um So that's what I use this for. And the way the e -stim feels, most people describe it as pretty comfortable. It's it sounds worse than the actual needle, but I think it's actually really comfy. It's like a deep tissue massage. Some people think of it, they explain it as like a tap. So just kind of tapping like that. Some people describe it as like a heartbeat or like a thump, thump, thump. Essentially, you can feel it like that. It's not like sharp, sharp, sharp. It's a very relaxed, the muscle feels, usually it feels pretty nice when it's doing it. So for what to expect after dry needling, again, this varies. There isn't one blanket statement. If there is a side effect, the most common side effect is some muscle soreness. This shouldn't be pain. This shouldn't be worsening of the original symptoms. It's usually like you did a hard workout and your muscles are sore. That's the type of soreness you can expect with it if soreness is present. The other common side effect is bruising simply because we are inserting a needle into the human body. With the training that's required in order to perform this, we have learned, I've learned where the arteries and where the veins are that you do not want to hit, and I know how not to hit them. However, there's a lot of really, really small blood vessels that we sometimes do nick. The large majority of the time, you don't even feel it. There's just a bruise later. And it's a small blood vessel, very small bruise. It's kind of similar to just a scab on your knee, basically just kind of scraping something, it heals, it's not an issue. 
So that's kind of the process of dry needling. The, how the theories behind how it works or why it works are, there's two main theories. And in medicine, there's a lot of, we don't know exactly how it works, but we know it works, so we do it. That is the large majority of medicine. So at least modern medicine. So with this, again, there's two theories. Neither of them have been like super scientifically proven, but this is how people think it works. So the first theory is the trigger point theory. So a trigger point or a knot in the muscle is a tightened band. So if you kind of poke your upper trapezius, kind of that muscle up and through here, you're going to find one. Pretty much everyone has them. And some people, when they have pain, those trigger points, they don't always cause pain. They can be located there without causing pain, but sometimes they cause pain. And when they cause pain, that's what we target with the dry needling. So you actually take the needle and you find the trigger point and you put the needle into the trigger point. At this point, the muscle, that trigger point, contracts and then relaxes. So basically the knot is a partially contracted state of muscle. The dry needling forces the muscle to fully contract and then relax. So I like to compare this to trying to open a kitchen drawer. If you're trying to open a kitchen drawer that's stuck, keeping, like continuing to pull on it isn't gonna get you anywhere. A lot of the times you have to kind of shut the drawer before you fully open it. And that's exactly what is, is occurring with dry needling in the trigger point theory. The other theory is called the myotome model. And this is very similar to the chiropractic theory of care. So every segment in the human body is from the spine innervates various other areas. So for example, my biceps is innervated by the sixth disc down in my cervical spine. So if I was having dysfunction or pain in my biceps, you would then needle the biceps, needle the deep muscles along that area, the C6 area, the spinal muscles that cover that nerve that innervate that muscle, and then you hook those two together with e stem, And that can help kind of reset that myotome and get it working better. So that's the two theories of how dry needling works or why it's thought to work how it works in treatment. So this is the area that I get the most questions about. And it's usually like, do you have to do you use dry needling? Do you use dry needling with everyone? And dry needling works very well for specific people with specific injuries and specific circumstances. It's not a one size fits all treatment. It's not a magic bullet. I do not use it with everyone. There's a lot of people I don't use it with, but there are certain injuries that when someone walks in the door with that injury, it's one of the first things on my mind. I'm like, yes, we're gonna pull this out. Yes, we're gonna discuss this. And if the, if the client's on board, yes, we're gonna do this. And that's a really key piece that if the client is on board, if someone is not on board, we don't do this. The large majority of the time, you can get very similar results using your hands and doing soft tissue work. In some cases you can't, but the majority of the time you can. So we start there. If someone's not comfortable with this, there's no convincing, there's no leading. It's fine, it's not an option, it's off the table. We'll figure out how to solve your problem going a different direction that you are comfortable with because expectations influence outcomes. So if someone expects that it's gonna be a horrible experience, odds are it's gonna be a horrible experience. So we're just not gonna do it and we're gonna save that horrible experience and we're gonna make it a good experience and decrease those pain levels so they can get back to what they wanna do faster in a way that they're comfortable with. So that's kind of the 411 on dry needling, what the process looks like. I did forget to mention there's gloves, hand sanitizer, alcohol, and little cotton balls. So my hands, after I put them in gloves, are sanitized. The area on the client's skin is sanitized. It is a sanitary procedure. Forgot that part, wanted to mention it. So that's what the procedure looks like. That's how it's thought to work. And those that's kind of how it fits into the overall treatment plan of care. So not the end all be all, it's one tool in an overall comprehensive solution to someone's problem. So if you have questions, feel free to message me, feel free to comment, and I hope you all have a great night.